Hello YouTube, it is almost the end of uh, 2017, it is the 30th of December today and I thought I'd make one more video uh, this year and this time I really like to talk to you about the Lenovo Yoga book and make a full review of that. Some of you might say, hang on, you already did a review of the Lenovo Yoga book and that is true but that was this Lenovo Yoga book, the Android version. This is a Windows version and as you can see they are completely different. This is black and this is grey. And that's about the only difference there is between them. Except that on the back of the Windows version it says Windows Pro. So uh, I thought I'd make kind of a two-part video here. Uh, where I'll start to talk about uh, this, the Android version, in a kind of long-term perspective. And then after that I will go into talking about the Windows version in a more of a first review uh, kind of thing. So uh, let's go! Here's the new and improved re-review review of the Lenovo Yoga book. So, the uh, Lenovo Yoga Book Android version, is it still worth the money? Um, in 2017, in the end of 2017, it's been over a year since this was announced and released. Uh, is it still worth it? I think yes, uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's still a pretty good Android tablet thing. Uh, there hasn't really been that many top-tier Android tablets released lately. Uh, there is the Samsung Galaxy Tab S3 and I must admit that as a tablet I think that is probably better than, than this one. Uh, but when I compare the new tablets to my aging uh, Sony Xperia Z4 tablet, the old Sony is still doing pretty well. So uh, I haven't found any reason to, to upgrade and uh, I think that the Lenovo Yoga Book Android version has a couple of tricks up its sleeve that means that it's still worth getting. When I did the review of this I said that it might actually be my favorite Android tablet thing. It isn't, that's still the Sony. But this uh, has still found a place in my workflow and I've been using it quite a lot uh, this year in 2017. Especially for the first eight months because in September I got the Windows version and I've been using that instead in some cases. But still, um, what I found was that I didn't really use, I don't, haven't really used the uh, yoga book as a tablet. I said in my review that it is more of a tablet because it's running Android and Android is not a very good laptop operating system. Even though Lenovo has tried to add, you know, that uh, side by side app thing where you kind of get three apps running in phone mode. That's not a very good multitasking solution. So I haven't used it, but still the, the, the taskbar and switching between apps is really nice. Uh, the keyboard means that you can actually use this for typing. Uh, the Halo keyboard is not very good for typing, actually. It's an acquired taste. You get used to it, uh, and for the Android version you really need to turn off the uh, uh, the uh, autocorrect feature because it's it drives me nuts you know you're typing and then you have to move your hand to select the word uh, otherwise it might be some other word and and that's really annoying so uh, where this device really shines is in the portability and in the versatility uh, because it's android and it, it's running, you know, with a big eight and a half thousand milliamp hour battery. It really is just a grab and go device. 
uh, I found myself during this year when I needed something to, you know, going to a meeting or something, I grabbed this because even though I might not have charged it uh, in the past couple of days or, or so, it would still be charged and ready for me because the battery life is just phenomenal and the standby time is, is really great and just flip it open and it's ready to go. And even if it is at 15%, you still have plenty of power to actually get you through a you know, 30 minute bike typing session or something. It's not a problem. So phenomenal battery life, phenomenal portability and the versatility of having the keyboard doing the typing and uh, you know playing games in tablet mode watching videos uh, you know it's really good these two stereo speakers are not the loudest speakers I've heard but they are decent and uh, the separation the stereo separation is actually quite good so it is a really nice companion when you're out and about I haven't used it so much for traveling because I bring my proper laptop for traveling because I want to do things like photo editing and, and this really isn't very good at that but for running around town this is great I haven't been using the pen much though and that's because in the Android version you can only use the pen in certain apps so say that I'm taking notes in OneNote and uh, I'm looking at some kind of presentation and I want to you know, draw whatever it is they're showing on the screen. Uh, I have to you know, switch from typing mode to pen mode on the Halo keyboard. And that will open the, the pen note taking app so I can draw my stuff there. And then I have to export that, import it into OneNote and then uh, you know, I can continue. And it's possible to do but it's not very easy to do and it's not a good workflow. This summer, uh, having used this for note taking on you know, a dozen or so meetings, uh, I started working on a new book, a new novel, and uh, I started doing that in OneNote because I couldn't really find a good authoring app for Android. There's several that looked good for iOS, but I couldn't really find one that I liked for Android. Uh, so I started doing it in OneNote and got really frustrated with that. And in September, uh, Microsoft was running a back to school special. So if you bought a two in one convertible uh, PC running Windows, uh, you got a cashback. And that's what I came in and decided to buy the Windows version of uh, Lenovo Yoga Book. So, going to talk about talk about that and review that in a bit. First of all, just want to say, I still think that the Android version of the Lenovo Yoga Book is worth its money today. Uh, it's still one of the best Android tablets around. Uh, there are better ones, but I think this has. Uh, broad spectrum of versatility that really makes it stand apart and the battery life as I said is, is really really good so I can still wholeheartedly after one year of usage uh, recommend this the battery is still good after one year and I've been using it it's you know it's one of those devices that hasn't really been turned off since I bought it and, and it's holding up really well so Kudos to uh, Lenovo, it's a good device and still worth the money. So that's a long-term review of uh, the Android version. Let's go ahead and talk about the Windows version instead. So here's the Windows version of the Lenovo Yoga Book. And as you can see, it is physically identical to the Android version, except for the color. And one more thing, this version actually is the LTE version. So this got a built-in 4G uh, modem, uh, which I haven't actually used at all 
because uh, I bought a SIM card prepaid uh, and it's haven't uh, managed to, to connect using it. It says, so oh, I got a SIM card and I entered the pin code and, and off I go and uh, it doesn't work. It keeps disconnecting. That might be because I didn't buy a SIM card that was only for data. I bought one that is really for a phone. So might be uh, some issue with that. I don't know. But this is the LTE version of the Windows version of the Lenovo Yoga book. So as I said, I bought this because I wanted to get more applications uh, that I could use for writing my book basically, and also better integration uh, with uh, OneNote so for, for note taking. And um, just to remind us what this is, I brought the specifications, I'm going to read them. Uh, so it's an Intel Atom X5 Z8550 uh, CPU, so that's a quad core, uh, 1.44 gigahertz base clock speed, and then it burst up to uh, 2.4 gigahertz. So it's not the fastest machine, it's got, you know, quad core is, uh, it's okay, but it's not hyper-threading, so it's only four threads. Uh, it's got an Intel HD graphics 400, uh, running at 200 megahertz with a 600 megahertz burst. Not overly impressive either, but for the Android version, it's actually managing all the games that I've played on it quite well. Uh, it is possible to output 4K video using the micro HDMI, so, so that's nice. It's got four gigabytes of RAM. That's the low power DDR3 RAM. So it's not the fastest RAM around, but it's pretty good. Uh, and it's got 64 gigabytes of storage. Four gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigs of storage is plenty on the uh, Android version. But on the Windows version, I was concerned that this would be too restricted because, you know, four gigs of RAM when you're sharing the RAM between the CPU and the GPU, hmm, not very good. And also 64 gigs of storage for full Windows 10 Pro, at least like 20 gigs, 30 gigs uh, after, you know, Windows is installed. So not a lot of room for expansion here. So that's one of the issues I've had with this. Eight and a half thousand milliamp hour battery. Uh, that's actually pretty good, even for the Windows version. It will easily last me a full day, no worries. Uh, the screen is 10.1 inch, full HD. Actually, it's 1980 by 1200, so it's slightly higher resolution. I really love this screen. I'm sure that some people will say that, oh, it's not calibrated right, or it's, you know, they could have gone with the uh, 2K screen, but I, I really like it. Uh, it goes up to 70% of sRGB. I don't care, it looks good. Uh, 400 nits of brightness, people say. Uh, I don't really know what that means. I do know that I've been using this inside and outside, although it must be said that outside has mostly been in Sweden and uh, we don't have that much sun from September until now, so, you know. Uh, and it got all the usual Wi-Fi and, and Bluetooth and stuff. So those are the... the um, uh, the specifications. It's also got stereo speakers, one speaker there, one speaker there. It's got power button and volume rockers and it's got the micro USB uh, connector which is both for charging and for inserting peripherals like keyboard and mouse and uh, you know USB memory and stuff like that. Micro HDMI connector and then we have a port for micro SD card and a nano SIM card. I think it's a nano SIM card. 
don't really know. All right, so those are the specifications. Is it powerful enough to actually run some applications? Well, uh, yes, it is. I've been writing a book on it uh, using a tool called Scrivener or Scrivener. Uh, and that works great. OneNote works like a charm. Everything just flows and it's really easy to use. Uh, OneNote, of course, for Windows, we have full integration with Windows Ink. So you can now, I can now draw directly into OneNote and that works very well. Uh, also, the pen seems to work better in Windows than it ever did in Android. I think it's a, it's a much nicer process to, to draw stuff in, uh, in the Windows version. Uh, I've integrated this, of course, I'm using OneNote, I'm using OneDrive and also using Dropbox and all that works great because you know, it's full Windows. So everything that works well in Windows works well here as well. Uh, it does perform a bit worse obviously than the android version you do need to have virus protection and you know firewalls and stuff like that which possibly you wouldn't think about as much on the android version but here you need it uh, i find that the keyboard the halo keyboard is actually easier to use when using it here in windows uh, because the spell correction in windows is usually you know you get yet once you type the word it's get marked as this might be spelled incorrectly and then you click on it and then you can correct it i like that i prefer that over the android version which just assumes that you're gonna write another word uh, and correct it for you uh, this works a lot better uh, when you have this keyboard interaction uh, the mouse pad works as well <laughs> the mouse buttons don't really work that well so so that's you know, but you know you can always uh, touch the screen as well uh, the weight of this is still phenomenal the size is still incredibly small uh, and it's still so easy to just grab and go uh, i for, with my laptop, my normal laptop, a 13-inch laptop, it always seems to be out of battery when I need it. Uh, this doesn't. I don't know why, but it just seems to be, you know, when, when it's off, it's off. Uh, so I feel com pretty confident when I'm going out that it will actually be battery left on it and just, you know, open it up and, and type away on my book. So, works very well. Basic applications works very well. Gaming, not so much. The uh, Atom processor and the 400 HD graphics is not really uh, good for, for any serious kind of gaming. Uh, casual games obviously works pretty well. Uh, I tried to install Lightroom on this and I filled up the drive completely so I couldn't do anything really and it was really really slow so for this version of yoga book I have a micro SD card inserted for the Android version I didn't need one because 64 gigs that's plenty of storage on Android but it's really not enough on the Windows version So a couple of things that are not so good with the Windows version of, of uh, the Lenovo Yoga book. First of all, that always ready feeling that you have in Android, you just flip it open and there you are. That doesn't actually work on the Windows version. I don't know why. I think it might be some kind of problem with the, uh, with the driver or BIOS or something because uh, if it goes into hibernation, it will not start. And I try to upgrade it and run the latest software on it. It still will not start. I have to, if I put it to sleep and it goes 
down into deep hibernation where it kind of you know saves the state on the hard drive and then uh, waits uh, it shuts down basically it will not wake up again uh, so you have to or i have to uh, restart it using a long press of the power button which is annoying it does boot very quickly though so it's not a huge problem it boots like from cold boot takes like 10 seconds or something so it's not a huge problem but it is annoying uh, it doesn't have that flip it open and just go uh, feeling about it that's annoying the battery life is not as good as the android version it's still a full day uh, but at the end of that day you're gonna be like mm, well, maybe I should charge it up uh, and that's another annoying thing you can't actually connect something while you are charging because there's only one USB port uh, and that's kind of well, it would be nice if I could attach uh, a keyboard or mouse I could of course use uh, use um, Bluetooth for that but it would still be nice to be able to attach peripherals uh, separate hard drive would be brilliant obviously uh, but I can't do that and charge it at the same time I'm sure there are some ways of doing that some add-ons that you could buy but I haven't found one and uh, I just find it really annoying uh, the key the halo keyboard as i said it is an acquired taste uh, you get used to it kind of but it's still not the best typing experience because you still i still at least miss uh, type quite a lot the fingers aren't quite where you thought uh, they are so one thing that i constantly do is i try to press space and instead i press either b or the mouse pad which which is bad it also has a couple of uh, quirks uh, one of the most annoying things is that and, and this is true for many applications you can't actually type two keys at once uh, unless one of them is control alt shift those keys can be combined with other keys but all the other keys can't so if you're trying to play a game where you have like wasd or, or cursor keys uh, you can only really type one at a time so if you press left for instance to run left and then you press space to jump uh, it will stop pressing left which maybe there's a setting somewhere that i haven't found but that is really really annoying because that means that you can't there's a lot of stuff that you can't do on this keyboard uh, you could of course do them if you had a separate keyboard but the halo keyboard does not support it which means that uh, mm, playing games on this it's fine as long as you can connect some other device to control the game uh, like uh, a keyboard or a mouse uh, or if you can use the screen and there are not that many games in windows that really use a touch screen to to good effect that i know of android is all about that so playing games on the android version works fine but playing games on the windows version doesn't really work that well and it's very much because of the halo keyboard uh, limitations there So one question that people kept asking last year was who will use this because it's low powered it's tiny and and you can't you know the keyboard is not very nice uh, and uh, the pen is limited use because you can't hold it and you draw on one side and you look on the other side and it's a lot of things that people were complaining about last year I think I now know who this device is for. At work, at my office, we have a certain class of people uh, who spend most of the time running around between different meetings. 
uh, we call these people managers and uh, they constantly have to you know take notes uh, and the laptops they use won't last a full day because we, we can't use you know any laptop we need to use the uh, laptops that we get from the IT department and they are not that great on battery life so you need to charge it a couple of hours and then you need to charge it for so instead they are carrying around a pad or book notebook uh, it's usually blue and they take down notes all day long they take down notes and then they sit in the evening and transfer the notes from the notebook to the laptop so they have everything in one note instead for those people those kinds of people who, who are running around with a book to, to write things down in the kind of people who had a file of facts in the 80s those kind of people will actually would actually love this i think because you you can take your pen and you can write your stuff down and it will immediately go into OneNote or whatever it is you're using. You can type out your, your emails, you can show PowerPoint presentation and this battery will last you a full day of work. So those kinds of people professionally I think would really benefit from, from this. They might today be using Surface Pros for instance. Uh, which is also a good option, but Surface Pro doesn't have this this kind of thing, uh, and that's why I don't really like the Surface class of, of uh, detachable keyboard, the floppy keyboards. I don't like those because uh, you can't sit back in your armchair with you know the laptop in your in your lap and, and typing. Uh, the screen will be flopping around you actually need to sit down on a desk and do it like this for that to work this one however you can actually grab by the keyboard and walk around and the screen will stay put i like that and i think other people will like it too so running and gunning uh, running around and and uh, taking notes uh, for me the obvious use case is that I basically take this with me whenever I leave the house I just take this and the pen and I go out and if I have 10 minutes 20 minutes 30 minutes left over I just sit down somewhere and I type up a couple of hundred words on my new book and it works brilliantly for that because it is so portable it's so light it's so easy to bring with you you can take it wherever you go and that is the main use case you have a notebook that is also synchronized to the internet and, and you can bring it with you whenever wherever you want I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the future because I, I really like the yoga book, uh, the Windows version I like even better than I did the Android version and that is saying a lot. Uh, it's not perfect though. There's a couple of things that I really like Lenovo to fix. Um, and you know, obviously uh, two USB Type-C ports, one on each end, uh, so you could, you know, connect one to the power and one to some peripherals and also you could decide which side you wanted the power to go in that would be great uh, maybe a slightly larger screen if you look at the screen I don't know if you can see you can see here where the it's got quite a lot of bezels uh, I don't want to change the shape and the form factor of the package but they could grow the screen slightly without actually changing it that would be really really nice uh, one more thing is the keyboard uh, I, the halo keyboard is okay but with that kind of thickness i think you might be able to actually add clicky keys to it that would of course mean that you can't use a pen on this surface and that's a 
another thing I'd like I'd like to see the pen working on the screen instead. Uh, active digitizer in the screen, so you can, you know, take notes like this instead of of taking notes like this, and then oh yeah, that was right. So uh, that's another thing. I like the micro SD card. Uh, so I, I like to keep the micro SD card, obviously. Uh, there might be actually two card slots. Uh, one for increasing the internal storage and one for, you know, transferring files from your camera uh, to this to, to do you know, photo editing or whatever. A bigger SSD, 128 gigs minimum, uh, four gigs of RAM, is okay but, but obviously 8 gigs is more fun what I like to see is Lenovo releasing one of these with uh, the Snapdragon 845 chipset to get that always on always ready kind of feeling uh, we kind of seeing those coming out now with the 835 we got the Asus Nova Go and we got a, something from HP they are promising battery life, active use for more than 20 hours and standby time of you know, 700 hours, which is what, a month or something. That would be brilliant for this kind of device. Lenovo, they, you know, you, you've got all the bits. All you have to do is change it up a bit uh, and get that clicker keys. It doesn't have to be brilliant key travel, but it's Clicky keys are better than the uh, Halo keyboard. Active digitizer on the screen, grow the screen ever so slightly. Just up the storage and the RAM uh, and do, you know, with the uh, Snapdragon 845 uh, to, to get that always on, always ready. Two USB Type-C port. One of them Thunderbolt 3 capabilities, so you can hook it up to a dock. Uh, that would be great. That would be terrific. That would be the machine of the future, uh, and I would, I would buy one of those as well. I already have two Lenovo Yoga books. I actually bought a third Lenovo Yoga book, the Lenovo Yoga A12, the 12-inch version of the Android version. That sucked really bad. Don't buy it. And the reason for that is that uh, it basically kept all the bad things with the Lenovo Yoga Book and uh, replaced the good things. So the screen is much worse, the pen isn't there, uh, and it's Android only, and it is just terrible, terrible. So don't buy that. The Lenovo Yoga Book Windows version, though, is absolutely brilliant. There is a Chromebook version coming out, I believe. I wouldn't buy that because I don't like Chrome, but I'm hoping that Lenovo will release a Yoga Book 2 with the um, Snapdragon 845 uh, running Windows, uh, and hopefully they will listen to me and add all the other stuff, and that would be a great product. So, should you buy the Lenovo Yoga Book Windows version? If you could get a good deal on it, yeah. Uh, still think it's a, it's a very good device for note-taking. As I said, always bring it with me. Uh, don't expect it to replace your laptop because it's not powerful enough. Don't expect it to replace your Android tablet because it's not really very good at doing you know tablet things on uh, so only if you have that note-taking specific note-taking need should you get this device I think otherwise there are better options but I really love my yoga book and I still as I said never leave home without it right that's it Thank you very much for watching uh, this video. Uh, it's, it's as usual, it's a lot longer than I thought it would be, but still, thank you for watching. 
thank you for subscribing to to my channel there are a couple of hundred people actually subscribed to the channel which is very nice uh, do subscribe if you want to uh, do hit the like button if you want to do that as well it's always nice to be appreciated if you don't like it you know you don't actually have to to hit the dislike button uh, that, that's okay that's okay uh, do ask questions or leave comments below i am really not very good at answering them but uh, i do sometimes answer them for instance right now i'm gonna say that you can't make phone calls to or from the windows version of this uh, with the lte it's for data only so that's question someone asked so please subscribe please like and uh, i will see you next year hopefully bye Happy New Year!